I call the National Assembly for Wales to order. Item one, questions to the First Minister. Question one, Andrew R.T. Davis. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, First Minister, what action has the Welsh Government taken to promote Cardiff as a destination for financial services? We are promoting Cardiff, including its enterprise zone, as an internationally competitive area for companies to locate, and we have a strong pipeline of inquiries. Thank you, First Minister, for that answer. Uh, many times in First Minister's questions and ministerial questions, we hear about the links that the Welsh Government have to other devolved governments. Uh, an important part in promoting Cardiff, would you not accept, is the Mayor of London's role and Cardiff, in, uh, sorry, London in particular, as financial services sector. What discussions, if any, has your government had with the Mayor of London and the London Assembly uh, about alerting them to the opportunities here in Cardiff? I met with the um, Mayor's Chief Financial uh, Advisor the other day and I could see great synergy. Do you see the same synergy that I could see being developed? Well, the Minister has met the Lord Mayor of London, not admittedly the Mayor of, of London. Uh, I can say the message is getting across in London anyway. For example, the FT and the Evening Standard recently described Cardiff as a great nearshoring location for international business. And of course, we have our own office uh, in London, whose job it is to uh, look to bring investment into Wales. Julie Morgan. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, would the First Minister agree that the Coalition Government has done no favours to the financial services and uh, in Cardiff um, because of its proposal to offshore 105 jobs uh, from Companies House um, in my constituency of Cardiff North? And these are jobs that have been outsourced from the DWP, then outsourced from the Cabinet Office, and now are to be offshored to India. Well, that, that's a shocking statistic, but it shows what the coalition government does best, and that's export jobs. Leanne Wood. First Minister, Wales has lost many jobs in recent years, uh, with multinational companies choosing to relocate elsewhere, and indeed government jobs relocating elsewhere. Do you think that there's more that you could do to support the Wales Co-op Centre to help workers finance and organise their own buyouts under such circumstances? And will the Welsh Government commit to considering, and if appropriate, uh, facilitating workers' buyouts as a matter of course when foreign investors are looking to with Draw activities from Wales? Well, I can assure the uh, leader of Plaid Cymru the Welsh Government hasn't uh, outsourced jobs uh, out of Wales. Uh, nevertheless, I take her point that it's important uh, that a cooperative <coughs> model is seen as a workable model, and we see good examples of it across Wales and have done in the past. Uh, working with the Wales Cooperative Centre, yes, we would want to uh, see uh, more cooperative models being rolled out across Wales in the future. Question two, Lindsay Whittle. Uh, Dale Clowes, um, First Minister, what action will the Welsh Government be taking now that the report on public attitudes to smoking in cars carrying children clearly indicates support for a ban to be imposed? Yes, uh, as we've said on many occasions, we will consider legislative options once we've reviewed the evaluation of our Fresh Start Wales campaign in the summer. Well, First Minister, you, you will be aware that 82% of the public in Wales have agreed now that smoking in cars carrying children should be banned, and the same percentage said they would comply with a ban if one was introduced. The United Kingdom government, after pressure from Labour members of the House of Lords, will be introducing legislation next year, and the signs are that the Scottish Parliament will do likewise. What possible reason is there for your government to drag its feet on this issue, please? We had dragged drag that feet, we were the first to suggest it, in fact, uh, long before England and long before Scotland. Uh, and what we said was that we would conduct a, a, a survey over the course of two years. Uh, that is now complete. We will examine the findings uh, of uh, that exercise and then look to legislate uh, if those findings are robust. And the member is right. Uh, it, it does appear that there, are, uh, that, it is, that it is, there is widespread public support for such a ban in Wales. Jonathan Saunders. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Minister, you are correct. There is overwhelming support to end the smoking in cars with children present. And with the Fresh Start campaign due to end this week, um, launched two years ago, I do ask, how well has this campaign engaged with the many across Wales? What is the level of comprehensive feedback and data that you have acquired already? And when will you be deciding what further action your government will take on this issue? Well, the report, uh, Smoking in Cars Carrying Children, was published at the end of November of 2013. Uh, it showed that there's been an increase in the uh, number of people who believe that smoking in cars carrying ch where children are being carried should be uh, banned. Uh, that is something we are uh, considering, of course, uh, and we will uh, respond uh, before the summer. I can now question I can. And now questions from the party leaders. First of all, Leader of the Opposition. 
Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. First Minister, when was the last time Ed Miliband sought your advice on health policy? Well, I wonder when the last time it was that uh, the Conservatives sought the leader of the Conservatives' advice on transport policy. Yeah. <laughs> Quite often, actually. Only last week. <laughs> but I noticed you chose not to answer the question. Uh, it is interesting to know that the reason why you wouldn't ask that question, because no doubt he'd be very embarrassed to ask you for advice when you look at the record of the Labour Party here in Wales. Last June, last June you said that the figures in Wales were going in the right direction. Well, why, if they're going in the right direction, are 15,000 Welsh cancer patients now seeking treatment in English hospitals? And why, if they're going in the right direction, are 14,000 patients waiting on a 14-week diagnostic test wait list? If he has figures that show that 15,000 cancer patients are going to England for treatment, I invite him to produce them. That's the Tory line from Central Office. No, if he has act actual figures that support that, we'd all be interested in seeing those yeah. figures. The reality is, of course, that cancer waiting times in Wales are better than they are in England. If you want to be treated for cancer, you will be seen quicker in Wales than in England. It's about time Jeremy Hunt ensured the NHS in England provided the right level of treatment for cancer patients in England refer one, to one point about the 14,000 patients who were waiting on a diagnostic wait time for 14 weeks or more, and the figures that I put you last, put to you last week, about 28,000 patients waiting eight weeks or more for diagnostic treatment. Is it not the case, First Minister, with a Kinnock back in the Welsh Labour fold, that most probably, most probably the best line that can be thought when you think of a Kinnock senior is if you vote for Welsh Labour, you better not get ill here in Wales? Well, I, I, I think there are many of us who will take with a great pinch of salt uh, what's order, said by the, uh, the Conservatives. Uh, you know, let's talk about uh, what they've failed to do uh, in the, uh, the last few weeks. Failed to stand up for Wales on electrification. Let's just examine again what David Jones said on the 16th of July 2012. This is an extra £4.2 billion of the funding we are announcing today. A lot of it going to the South Wales Valley Lines. The South Wales Valley Lines are going to the Secretary of State. A lot of it going to the extension of the GWR route to Swansea, said the Secretary of State. 16th of July 2012, the Leader of the Opposition said. This is what our rail network needs. Electrification to Swansea and across the Valley Lines will provide a priceless boost to both the region and Wales as a whole. This is the Conservatives positively regenerating, that's the word, positively regenerating Wales. I mean, was he misled or was he misleading? We look then further on, Byron Davis. Byron Davis. Byron Davis said, this is what he said, the investment in our railways from Conservatives in government is one of the greatest infrastructure projects since Victorian times, he said. Since Victorian times. Was he misled or was he misleading? 31st of October 2013, the Prime Minister said, I know we need these infrastructure investments in Wales. It's this government that's putting money into electrification of the railway line to Swansea and, of course, of course, the Valley Lines. Was he misled or was he misleading the people of Wales? We take no lessons on transport or health from a party that fails to stand up for Wales and has thrown the towel in when it comes up to standing up for the people of Wales and modernising our railways. Officer, the first minister put a challenge down. I he did not he... stick to the question. How was that in I'm order? I'm sorry. I quite happily respond to it. I will quite happily respond to it. <laughs> Is it somebody's birthday party today, or are we just particularly jolly? I don't expect the first minister to have to shout, and then I can't hear him. So if you can just... Um, um, are when a Democrat, I'd read. Leader of the Welsh Liberal Democrats, Kirsty Williams. Thank you, Presiding Officer. First Minister, how often do you think a District General Hospital in Wales should receive an unannounced visit from the Healthcare Inspectorate? That is a course that the uh, Minister is looking at to make sure that the uh, healthcare uh, inspection system is more robust. Uh, I, that's not what I asked, Minister. I asked you. How often do you think a Welsh District General Hospital should receive an unannounced visit from Healthcare Inspectorate Wales? That is a matter for the Inspectorate, because there are some hospitals, as with schools, who will need more inspections more frequently. That is a matter, of course, for the inspectors in their professional judgment. I'm amazed that you don't have an opinion, uh, First Minister. 
But let's be clear, even if you don't have an opinion, Healthcare Inspectorate Wales <coughs> does. Uh, it says that it should be visiting a district general hospital at least once a year. For our more sophisticated hospitals, such as the one in here in Cardiff at the Heath, they should be visiting twice a year. In reality, they're only able to get around to district general hospitals once every three years. When will you put in place support for Healthcare Inspectorate Wales to enable them to carry out the level of inspections they say that they want to and that they need to to be able to reassure themselves, us as politicians, you as the First Minister and the Welsh public that our hospitals are as safe as we would all want them to be. I'm surprised to hear the leader of the Liberal Democrats suggest that some of our hospitals are unsophisticated. She said that our more sophisticated ones, I take the view that all our district general hospitals are sophisticated and should be able to offer as a service that is as local as possible. I do not take the view somehow that um, sophistication runs only in some hospitals. That's an unfortunate turn of phrase. And I'm sure that uh, those who are working as nurses and doctors in those hospitals would take note of what she said. As far as the, uh, the inspectorate are concerned, they have said that they wish to uh, look to inspect hospitals more frequently. That is something the health minister is looking at doing to make sure that when we are attacked by Tory central office and people uh, made frightened by those attacks on Wales that we saw over the weekend, that people can have faith in their health service. Mark and Olaf, And finally, Leader of Plaid Cymru, Leanne Wood. Dear Llywydd, last week Labour published a paper on the future of devolution, and in that paper there was a commitment to keep the Barnet formula. The paper says, and I quote, the Barnet formula should remain as the funding mechanism for public services. Was the First Minister consulted on this important policy announcement? She's talking about the Scottish proposals. They're not a matter for me. The view of Welsh Labour and the view of the Welsh Government is there needs to be Barnet reform. One nation Labour. <coughs> so with the First Minister told me that he would fight for a commitment to fair funding in Labour's UK general election manifesto. He said it is important that fair funding is looked at from the perspective of the whole of the UK. Who does he think his party leader will side with on fair funding? With him or his Scottish counterpart? The people of Britain, fair funding across the whole of the UK. Um, she seems to understand what's in the UK general election manifesto before it's actually been written. And I can assure her, my view is, and I have expressed this to Ed Miliband, that the Barnet formula will need to be reformed. There needs to be fair funding across the whole of the UK. But it's not a view shared by the SNP or sister party. The First Minister said on the floor of this assembly, and I quote, I do not think that the Barnet formula is tenable in the longer term. I think that we all understand that. Clearly, the Labour leader in Scotland doesn't understand that because she said, I think the Barnet formula works for the United Kingdom. The Barnet formula works for the whole of the United Kingdom, and it is a mechanism that has served us well so far. Isn't it the case that it's the leader of the opposition in Scotland who holds more sway with his party leader than he does himself? Well, well the leader of the opposition in Scotland is a woman, so uh, rather than his, her name is jo Joanne Lamont, but, uh, but there we are. The, the other point to, to remind you of is, is quite simply this, that Scotland will have its own views, Wales will have another. I've made it absolutely clear that we believe the Barnet formula should be reformed. I note that Plaid's sister party in Scotland, the SNP, have said in the event of a no vote, they will fight tooth and nail to keep the Barnet formula as it is. The question, rhetoric, rhetorical question that I ask Plaid Cymru is this, will they condemn the SNP for their comments in that regard, that they will fight against the interests of Wales? I know our question I are a papier. Back to the questions on the order paper. Question three has been withdrawn. Question four, no. Question four, Byron Davis. It was a rhetorical question. He Will made the that first point. Minister make a statement on future of the Welsh bus network? 
Well, we fully understand the importance of an effective and affordable bus service, which is why we provide significant funding to support the network throughout Wales. And the Bus Policy Advisory Group will advise us on maximising value for public money and securing the best possible provision of services. Thank you, First Minister. Um, given the new financial year starts in four working days, can you explain why your government has failed to inform local authorities what support they will receive through the Local Transport Service Grant? Acknowledge that the uncertainty caused by not having a clear revenue stream to support bus services next year has put many under threat and closed some routes unnecessarily. Will no, you apologise to the people of Wales and ensure your government informs local authorities today? Uh, well, I have to say that we've been clear in terms of what we expect from bus services in Wales and funding. Will he apologise to the people of Wales for his failure to take their side when it comes to electrification of the railways? Will he apologise for that? Will he apologise for taking London's side against his own constituents? His own constituents. We will take no lessons at all from the Tories when it comes to transport when they have sold Wales down the river. Yeah. Really? Show the paper. Green up your way. What assessment has the First Minister made of the effects of cuts to uh, concessionary, concessionary fare reimbursement rates on rural services in places like Anglesey, where already fares are facing uh, an upward pressure, where there are threats to jobs as well as routes, uh, and where already limited services are, of course, a vital uh, and irreplaceable uh, lifeline to many? Well, the new three-year funding package does follow an independent review of local authorities' arrangements for reimbursing bus operators uh, for offering more than 720,000 concessionary pass holders in Wales, uh, including armed forces personnel and veterans, the ability to take advantage of that concessionary travel. Local authorities are responsible in law for ensuring that bus operators are no better and no worse off as a result of carrying pass holders for free. So it's important, of course, that local authorities take account of that uh, when deciding which services to support. Alan Roberts. Uh, Thank you, Presiding Officer. First minute, Minister, your programme for government talks about improving the development of services for ru rural areas. Notwithstanding that, the Wrexham Council in the North East has given up on each one of their rural programmes and say that that's because of cutbacks on behalf of Welsh Government and although having looked into it it uh, suggests that there hasn't been any kind of programme or instruction to cut. Are you happy with the Council under the control of your party giving that kind of explanation to people who are losing out because of the cutbacks? That's a matter for Wrexham Council of course. I understand, as everyone else does, that financial problems have been caused because of the policies of your party. Question five, Sandy Mewis. Officer. First Minister, will you provide an update on how the Welsh Government intends to raise standards of tenants in the private rented sector? Yes, the proposals for raising the standards in the private rented sector, as detailed in the Housing Bill, are mm -hmm. for a mandatory registration and licensing scheme for all landlords and agents operating in Wales. Licensing will involve a successful completion of both training and a fit and proper person test. Thank you for that. Um, last week, uh, Shelter Cymru and British Gas launched their report, Fit to Rent, at an event I hosted here in the Assembly. It followed the biggest ever survey of tenants in the private rented sector, and it painted an absolutely shocking picture with almost two-thirds of tenants experiencing some kind of poor housing conditions in the last year. So, First Minister, I'm extremely glad that you mentioned the bill. So, will you join me in welcoming Shelter and CIH Cymru support for the proposed mandatory registration and licensing scheme for private landlords, letting a man management agency in Wales to help ensure that the increasing number of families who are living in this sector have good quality homes? Yes, I do very much welcome that support. I'm pleased that our proposals, as outlined in the Housing Wales Bill, have gathered widespread support in recent months. Of course, the intention is to improve <coughs> management standards within the private rented sector, and good landlords and agents have nothing to fear. Mark Isherwood. Thank you. And of course, registration without enforcement doesn't change uh, a thing. 
Um, and the research found that 90% said their health had not been affected in the last year due to landlords not dealing with repairs in poor conditions. Given um, that your housing minister has confirmed that he doesn't have figures for numbers of enforcement actions uh, taken by uh, Welsh government, or by local authorities under the housing uh, health and safety rating system, that local authorities tell me that they assessed 6,500 units last year, but generally uh, seek to achieve improvements with advice, support and encouragement rather than enforcement. Uh, how would this proposed legislation address the need for uh, measured enforcement uh, rather than uh, a paper trail which would not necessarily deliver that? No, I, I believe it does provide uh, the ability for uh, there to be measured enforcement as somebody who spent much time in my previous career uh, suing landlords for housing disrepair. I know full well what things were like in the early 90s for so many tenants. I, I don't think anyone can argue sensibly that we should move to a system where private rented accommodation is of the right standard that we would all expect in the 21st century. Jocelyn Davis. President Officer. Uh, First Minister, the Shelter report finds that conditions in the private rented sector in Wales are worse than those being experienced uh, in England and more than half of the tenants say they'd rather be living somewhere else and I think that's a very sad state of affairs and for them of course this is the tenure of no choice. Uh, would you say that the private sector as it stands is suitable for housing vulnerable homeless families? I think it is inconsistent. I think that the uh, bill itself will provide the opportunity for ensuring that the quality of private rented accommodation increases in the future and that there's better consistency to make sure that the worst catch up with the best or indeed the worst no longer exist. Mick Hampton. Uh, First Minister, would you agree with me that the proliferation of houses of multiple occupancy does nothing to improve quality standards in the sector? and that more effective local authority licensing and enforcement would be good for tenants in the wider community? Yes, I understand that RCT have uh, recently designated a new additional uh, licensing scheme in their area, which will start on the 1st of uh, April, which will mean that all HMOs in the area will now need a, a license. It is important, of course, particularly in areas, um, uh, he will represent one such area, there are others, of course, in the chamber who will represent other such areas, uh, to ensure uh, that there is not a proliferation of HMOs that causes a, a difficulty in terms of community sustainability, if I can put it that way. Uh, of course, there is a need for HMOs to accommodate, particularly students, uh, but it's important that there is a, a balance struck within a community. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Will the First Minister make a statement on parental preference when choosing schools in the Welsh education system? Well, local authorities must enable uh, parents to express a preference for a school when applying for a place. Thank you very much for that answer, uh, First Minister. You'll be aware that there's a great deal of concern in Denbyshire, in my own constituency, uh, as a result of proposals to close uh, some schools with religious character uh, at the moment, uh, namely a, a secondary school in the, uh, in the north of the county uh, and indeed a, a local church in Wales school just outside Rithin. Now, I appreciate that you will not be able to comment on the specifics of those two particular cases, but what action would you expect local authorities uh, to have to take in order to ensure that there are schools with a religious character in their areas in order to meet the parental preference and pupil preference which is often shown for such schools? Well, the, the member appreciates, of course, that I can't comment on individual uh, circumstances. Uh, where there are existing schools, it's important that there is full consultation inevitably to make sure that uh, changes are made only after understanding the views of the public. It is true, of course, that in many, many areas of Wales there are no schools of a religious uh, character. Uh, that is uh, the, the, to do with the history of those areas. But as with any change in education provision or any school closure, I would expect there to be full consultation. Simon Thomas. Uh, uh, Thank you, presiding officer. Because of the geographical nature of Wales, the real option for many parents is an issue of faith and language, whether they choose Welsh medium education or not. At the moment, the education authorities in Wales are consulting on the strategic Welsh and education plans, and we're expected that, expecting that process to conclude over the next few weeks. Once that has happened, will you as a government look at all of these strategic plans as a whole and take a national view in order to ensure that the option for parents for Welsh medium education is met in all parts of Wales. It's extremely important, of course, regarding those schemes that local authorities consider in detail 
the demand for Welsh medium education in their areas. We would expect them, of course, to ensure that they've done so. We as a government, of course, will consider each scheme and, of course, we will consider the national picture too. If there are any schemes that do not meet the requirements, then we would revise or reconsider those schemes, but there is no indication at present that any scheme has fallen into that category. William Powell. <coughs> Will the First Minister please make a statement on the Welsh Government's commitment to microchipping animals? We are committed to it. Excellent. Thank you for that uh, concise answer, First Minister. Uh, and in this context, uh, with the forthcoming legislation in mind, uh, the, uh, the microchipping alliance, which is made up of several bodies such as the, the Kennel Club, the RSPCA, and indeed, and indeed also the Dogs Trust, are keen to uh, support uh, the Welsh Government in promoting the requirements of the new uh, legislation coming forward. Uh, in that context, I understand that they've experienced some difficulty uh, due to diary pressure with securing a, a meeting with the Minister to, to um, flesh out their proposals. Would you, First Minister, please urge your colleague, the Minister for Natural Resources and Food, to engage positively with this generous offer from this third sector body? Uh, well, he has heard that offer. Uh, in relation to the answer I gave him earlier on, of course, uh, there are different proposals and different regimes for microchipping different animals. He refers specifically to dogs, as he will know. Uh, from the 1st of March next year, uh, compulsory uh, microchipping uh, will be uh, introduced, and I'm sure the Minister will want to meet with all organisations in order to ensure that the regulations are properly enforced and understood. Nick Ramsey. Yeah. Uh, First Minister, can I concur with the, uh, the, the question and the sentiments raised by Will Powell? I do hope that the Minister will find time soon in the very crowded diary to, uh, to have meetings about this important issue. You'll be aware, First Minister, uh, that only uh, recently, uh, uh, in January, it was reported that uh, Chance, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier that went missing from uh, Barry uh, 10 years ago, had been found and it was just a, a day away from being put down before his microchip was scanned and he was returned to his owners. That's a, a, a human canine example of how, uh, of how microchism really does help people out on the ground. Please will you do what you can to make sure that this issue is promoted and that when the microchipping legislation is finalised that people do know about it and they do, they do get their pets microchipped. Yeah, yeah. Remember this is a good example of why microchipping is so important in terms of identifying dogs in the future uh, and of course uh, it, it will be important as we understand to make sure that people understand the changes in the regulations that will come next March and of course to understand how microchipping can benefit uh, people yeah. in terms of <coughs> making it less likely that they will lose a treasured pet. Roger Lynn Thomas. Uh, First Minister, perhaps it may be an idea to microchip the Minister to ensure that he keeps to the requirements of his busy diary and succeeds in reaching meetings uh, to meet people that want to discuss this issue with him. In principle, I'm sure that we would all agree that this is an important and essential is uh, important and essential but do you think that businesses that have registered will lead to a situation where some people will try to avoid registration in order to avoid the requirements no i don't think that's accurate if that were the truth we would never make any regulations at all in this place because of the fact that we would be fearful in terms of people who were going to be go beyond the law or ignore the law. So it's important that any registration system is put in place for the benefit of both people and animals and that we stick to those regulations. Question 8, David Rees. Yeah, Will the First Minister make a statement on Welsh Government support for small businesses in Aberavon? Well, we are committed to supporting and working with Welsh businesses to help them grow and create jobs. That's why, of course, for example, we created Business Wales as a streamlined service. Well, if I give that answer, First Minister, I'm sure you agree with me that small businesses are the heart of a vibrant high street and town centre. In light of the decision last week to try the closure of two slip roads at Junction 41 of the M4, what analysis has the Welsh Government made of the potential impact of this decision on small businesses in Patolabad, and has the Government considered whether any support would be offered to local businesses if they'd suffer a detrimental impact? Well, it is a trial. The trial will last for some six months. We will monitor traffic on both the motorway and local roads, and we will be using footfall data, uh, data from the Aberavon Shopping Centre to assess the effect on town centre businesses. During the course of the trial, comments will also be invited from members of the public, and we are investigating what funding streams might be made available to support local businesses. Iron Davis. Uh, thank you, 
Presiding officer, First Minister, in 2012, the Welsh Conservatives published our proposals to revitalise the high streets across Wales. Two years on, it is now evident that you are still dithering uh, and have now delayed yeah, yeah, your yeah. campaign, which was scheduled for June 2013 until the end of 2014. Now, our high streets are in a desperate need of support through business rate reform, measures to bring empty premises back into use and moves to make it easier for people to shop locally. Will you commit to bringing forward action to help small businesses across Wales and Aberavon in the summer of 2014? It was a curious question because, uh, as we see this morning, it seems that the independent uh, small business sector in Wales, particularly in retail, is doing better than anyone else in the UK almost. Uh, and so it, it shows that uh, we in Wales are outperforming many other parts of the UK. And it shows, of course, that what we as a Welsh Labour government are doing is once again benefiting the Welsh economy. Bethan Jenkins. Uh, First Minister, just following on from what uh, David Rees would say about the pilot you are um, taking uh, forward um, on the M4, can you explain to us how exactly you will be collecting comments from the mem members of the public? Because my inbox has been full of people really, really um, annoyed locally about what is going to happen, the potential effect of businesses in the area. So we really need to understand how people can take part in any consultation, because I think they feel at the moment that they haven't been fully engrossed in what the Welsh Government are doing on this? Well, I think I'm very clear what uh, will happen. Uh, the Minister will give further details in terms of what the consultation process will be, uh, or rather the, con the process for obtaining views from members of the public will be uh, in, uh, in due course, and that, of course, will inform the final decision as to what happens with this junction. Peter Black. Thank you, Mr. Officer. Minister, thank you for clarifying some of the details on, on the consultation with regards to that that particular closure. My inbox has also been full of people making comments about this particular issue. Could you just clarify in terms of the evaluation of this pilot, what weight will be given to the issues relating to traffic compared to the issues relating to the shopping centre and how will you balance the two in determining whether this experiment should be um, continued or not? Well, I think that needs to uh, be done when the evidence is assessed. Uh, I wouldn't want to prejudge the situation in any way. Uh, we have the trial, we'll judge the results of the trial in terms of the effect on footfall, in terms of the effect on, on safety and traffic on the M4. We know that section of the M4 uh, was built to a far lower standard than would have been the case if it was built these days. It was originally part of the A48, of course, rather than the M4, which is why there's a problem with that, uh, with that junction. There are other factors, uh, such as footfall, such as local traffic, and we will take all matters into account before a final decision is made. Question nine, Mike Hedges. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Uh, Will the First Minister provide an update on the services provided by Cardiff Airport? Yes, we've seen uh, very good growth in the airport with a 9% uh, increase uh, in the period up to uh, February of, uh, of 2014. Uh, we expect to see more passengers coming through the airport in the future and it vindicates the decision, of course, to make sure that we secure the future of our national airport. Th here, here. Can I thank you for that response, First Minister? I too welcome the news of a rise in number of passengers using the airport since it was purchased by the Welsh Government last year. Uh, of course, I remember when it was successful before, when it was run by the three Welsh counties, until we had the Tories uh, under John Redwood forcing the local authorities to sell it. Uh, First Minister, do you agree with me that it's time for the Tories to apologise for getting it wrong last time on, on the privatisation of the airport? And, and, getting it wrong, and getting it wrong this time by asking for it to be privatised. And, and what further improvements to the airport can we expect to see over the next 12 months? Well, let's see now then. February passenger numbers total 59,936, a growth of 30% on this time last year. Inclusive tour passenger, uh, passengers were up 15%. Scheduled passengers are up over 35% from February last year. Ad hoc charter boosted passenger numbers are up by over 156% since February of 2013. Yes, we've seen the, uh, the airport grow. Uh, members who are familiar with it will see the work that's being done there now to improve the security area. We will now look at what is done to improve the roads. Uh, that is an example of us delivering an airport for the future, as opposed to the Tories who are happy to see it close. William Graham. Certainly, we welcome the success of Cardiff. We, we wanted to get back to the same state of two and a half million passengers, but it was under private ownership. So I'd welcome the suggestions from the First Minister how he's going to publicise those remaining routes at Roos to make sure that all the people in South Wales use it and don't just go to Bristol. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, it was under private ownership, but, but passenger levels declined to under a million, I have to remind the, the, uh, remind the member, when it changed ownership yeah. to its previous owners. And I remember the Tories on this uh, chamber saying that it should be left to rot. There should be no chance of buying it. I'm a Byron Davis saying there was a £20 million uh, funding gap somewhere. Debt didn't exist. Didn't exist. Uh, scaremongering, of course, once again. Uh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for what the member has said in terms of welcoming the increase in passenger traffic. It's a shame the Tories can't bring it in themselves to realise it's because of the action taken by the Welsh Government that we have secured the future of the airport rather than seeing it decline and close, which is what they would have done if they'd have been in charge. Alan Fred Jones. Alan Fred Jones. Thank you very much. As a regular user of the airport, I'm very pleased with the encouraging news, although I would say there's a very long way to go. Again, there wasn't uh, any flights arriving apart from the one I arrived on last night. But I have a question about the staff. I understand that a number of the staff members are on zero hours contracts in the airport. Can you confirm that that is true? And if so, will you move to change that in the face of your opposition to such contracts? I will consider that issue, of course. The airport is run by a board and not the government directly, and it's not clear at present what the historic position is, but I will consider that and write to the member. Uh, presiding officer, I don't normally comment on asides made by members. When I hear Byron Davis say that buying the airport has meant people are dying of cancer, I think that is a disgraceful comment, and I think you should withdraw it. Uh, I didn't hear that, but uh, I would concur. Um, Eleanor Parrott. Uh, Lewis. Um, first Minister, one of the most important ways an airport makes money is things uh, through things like uh, retail catering and parking services provided at the airport. Can you confirm that in addition to the very welcome increase in passengers, there's been an increase in profits for the support services at the airport? And can you tell us when you expect the airport to break even again, given the um, vast and increasing losses that the airport had been making um, up until quite recently? I will answer the member's question. Now, I do regret the fact that Byron Davis has not been man enough to withdraw such a ridiculous statement. That is a matter for him and for him to explain to the, to the public of Wales. Let me do, deal, of course, with the, uh, the, the question that the member has, uh, has asked. The airport, of course, uh, is now moving towards profitability. We expected to see more passengers coming over the course of the next year, and the figures are very, very good. The important point, of course, is to make sure that footfall increases to improve the profitability of the retail uh, offer there. It's encouraging to see, uh, certainly, that there's been uh, a shop that's moved in the course of the last uh, few months. And I would expect, as passenger footfall increases, as it has, for the airport to move to profitability, because uh, we can't revenue subsidise it, that much is true. And secondly, of course, to see more shops being profitable. Question 10, Susie Davis. Um, what consideration will the Welsh Government be giving to noise pollution in the forthcoming planning bill? Well, uh, I can say to the member that TAN 11 does provide already a comprehensive framework for addressing noise as part of the planning process. Well, thank you for that, First Minister. Of course, uh, a noise from public construction and improvement work can have a major impact on the well-being of those living nearby, not just from the point of view of volume, but of duration, as you know from your own constituency. When contractors run behind schedule, they will seek permission from the local authority to work outside business hours in order to avoid paying a penalty for failure to finish the work on time, thereby exacerbating the effect on residents. Now, as there are no, uh, virtually no successful prosecutions for noise nuisance under existing planning laws, uh, existing laws, how do you think your government can give an effective voice to residents and business owners who complain bitterly that they have no effective redress in the circumstances I describe under the existing guidelines? There is redress in the existing law, but I share the member's concern that the existing law may not be as effective as it might be. I, I've had experiences, I'm sure she will have had, of constituents who complain about noise. Monitoring is then done, but often <coughs> it seems that monitoring is done once the uh, emitters of the noise have been warned. <laughs> and that's a situation I'm sure that we've all uh, come across. Uh, consideration may well have to be given, not via the planning bill, but via other means to making sure that where noise nuisance is measured, it's done in an unannounced way. And I think that's where we might need to look in the future. David Ellis Thomas. Thank you, Dame Presiding Officer. Does the First Minister share my ambition on the planning bill? namely that it will truly provide an opportunity to release businesses and the people of Wales from the overly 
stern and short-termist plans that has affected us over the years and is the first minister certain that the bill will appear in july as has been pledged and that these significant environmental bills will be have enough opportunity to be discussed by the people of wales so that as we legislate anew in these areas can make a real difference that's exceptionally important of course in order to ensure that any future bill, bills are effective and of course I'm confident that there will be sufficient discussion in this place and with the public at large. Question 11, Simon Thomas. Thank you, Presiding Officer. What discussions has the First Minister had regarding the proposed Welsh language standards? Well, the draft standards were published on the 6th of January. I explained at the time in my written statement that we had agreed with the Welsh Language Commissioner that we would refrain from making any comments regarding the standards during the investigation period, and the investigation closes on the 18th of April. Thank you, First Minister. I note in reading this consultation that the government website refers to the commissioners and the commissioners refers back to the government's website so can you confirm in terms of the process that you are content that the public is having its say in this process and do you then agree with Plaid Cymru that the new standards whatever they may be should not allow us to fall below the standards currently provided for under the current language schemes I don't wish to make any comment on the standards themselves at present I will uh keep uh, i will reserve my own view at present but may i say that publicly now that we expect the public to give their views on this and that the commissioner as somebody who is independent of government will consider this at present thank you presiding officer first minister it's exceptionally important that these language standards are appropriate but it's also important that we promote the language as much as possible you'll be aware that we on this ch side of the chamber had proposed creating a charter mark for welsh businesses to recognize high quality welsh language services particularly in the workplace what consideration have you given to this well we are considering the workplace at present because we understand the challenge that exists exists there at the moment in using uh, the language outside school uh, for people who have no experience of using the Welsh language out with the school and as I've said previously in this chamber we want to ensure that the Welsh language is promoted in the workplace but I have to say I have been troubled very much over the past weeks with some of the articles that have been written in London newspapers that give the impression that the Welsh language is the a problem in Wales, that there are problems in Wales because that there's excessive emphasis on the Welsh language. I hope the member will join me in my view to say that it's completely wrong and the Welsh language doesn't hold us back. The year is not 1847. The Welsh language is something that we must celebrate and support. Well, Russell George. Will the First Minister make a statement on the Welsh Government's policy on NHS continuing health care? Yes, our policy was set out in the 2010 framework for the implementation of continuing NHS healthcare in Wales. That framework has been revised and the revised framework has been subject to a public consultation exercise and it will then be published in June. Thank you for your answer, First Minister. Two constituents of mine recently came to see me about the future of their direct payment provision uh, now that one of them is in receipt of a package continuing healthcare. Uh, the First Minister will, will be aware, of course, of the nuances of this issue which has in effect disempowered them because uh, they have lost the locus of control over the services and service providers that personally uh, 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 for that tailor their circumstances. I did say to them I would raise this question on their behalf with you uh, but given that the, that the NHS in England has introduced a personal health budget for patients which may include direct payments for some types of health care are there any plans for the Welsh Government to pilot something similar in Wales? No, this is not something we're considering at this moment in time, but of course I would remind the member that in Wales there is a maximum charge for social care, £50 a week. In England there is not, which is why some people are paying up to £300 a week there. Ellen Jones. First Minister, some individuals and some in my constituency are interested in having direct payments for continuing health care as well as social care. So I'm disappointed to hear you saying this afternoon that you have no interest in looking at this as a policy area for the future. And I would hope that you may reconsider in order to give some health boards 
in very specific circumstances to actually be able to provide that funding for continuing health care as well as social care. May I tell the member that the framework that will be published in June will explain the situation regarding the use of direct payments and I hope that by that time the situation will be clearer for your constituents. Hopefully, uh, what you publish in June will be a decision support tool similar to that they've had in England for a number of years to ensure there's consistency of approach uh, across Wales. Will your tool also ensure that cognitive impairment as a result of dementia will be adequately reflected and therefore people who suffer from forms of dementia will qualify for continuing health care in the way that they haven't previously in the past, but had they lived in England, would have qualified? Well, of course, I mean, we, we, we can compare all afternoon. My, my <coughs> point would be that in England, of course, people have to pay an enormous amount of money for their care in a way they don't in Wales. But dementia, nevertheless, is a serious issue. We know it will be a growing issue in the future. The member is correct. Uh, I don't prejudge what the uh, framework says in June. I simply ask members to consider the framework when it is published, and then, of course, um, members will have questions, I've no doubt, at that time. 13, Mark Isherwood. Uh, what are the implications of the UK Government's 2014 budget statement for Wales? Further cuts to the Welsh budget. Uh, well, that's a, a short but sweet answer. Thank you very much indeed. Well, amongst other things, the <laughs> Chancellor uh, announced uh, housing policies that will deliver more than 200,000 new homes. Uh, what, if any, uh, additional resources the Minister will be aware will come to Wales either directly or as financial transaction funding? And will that be committed to housing in Wales? Uh, the total consequential, we believe, will be around about 36 million. Uh, a decision will need to be taken in terms of how that money is, is spent. But that has to be balanced, of course, with the 7.5% cut in revenue funding that we will, will have received over uh, a three-year uh, period. So, uh, yes, 36 million is, is welcome, uh, but nevertheless, uh, it goes nowhere near compensating for the, uh, the loss of funding that the people of Wales have received. Question 14, Julie James. Will the First Minister outline the Welsh Government's plans for developing tourism infrastructure in South Wales? Yes, one such example of how we uh, look to encourage and support tourism is through the Tourism Investment Support Scheme. Thank you for that answer, First Minister. As you'll know, the application for the proposed tidal lagoon sited in Swansea Bay has been accepted by the Planning Inspectorate, and so it looks as if it will build. Once built, a significant piece of infrastructure will be an enormous tourism draw, as well as contributing to our low-carbon energy production. First Minister, will you consider including it as part of our tourism strategy as well as part of our low carbon energy strategy for the future? Well, it's an, it, it is an interesting suggestion that the member makes. We'll have to wait and see uh, when and if it's built uh, and then of course decide uh, how it might be used for tourism and uh, to benefit the local economy. And question 15, Gwyn Price. Will the First Minister make a statement on how Islam benefits from the continued membership of the European Union? Well, the EU benefits Wales and Islow in many ways through structural funds and the CAP programme. Uh, for example, uh, EU projects in Caerphilly, which of course, uh, it, it, as a county, includes the members' constituency, have assisted almost 42,000 individuals. And last year, over 2,500 people were employed in the local authority area by 35 <coughs> companies from across the EU. Thank you for that answer. So First Minister, you can see the benefits of European generation across this line. Do you agree with me that those who want to use this forthcoming elections to call for us to leave are putting not just this, but thousands of jobs at risk? Yes, uh, le leaving the EU would jeopardise some 150,000 jobs. It would, it, would, it would end farming in Wales, bluntly, because without the uh, subsidies that farming receives, most farms are not viable. It would also cut us off from one of our most important markets, uh, why change what we know works? Uh, why change a system that's provided so many thousands of jobs to Wales? Uh, and why cut ourselves off to become a little island, or an island of a bit? Uh, I think that is the wrong approach for Wales, the wrong approach for Britain, and the wrong approach for Europe. Thank you, First Minister.